Hello, you are calls out there. How are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner. I'm joined by Julian. How are you doing, mate? I'm all right, Russell. Let me know if the quality is not great. I left my laptop at work tonight and I'm doing it on the phone. It's okay, mate. Honestly, it's all right. I've been keeping it. Right? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Just uh, I started training after, you know, I've had a lot of time off with arthritis and stuff and I've been training about four weeks and it just makes a difference, doesn't it, to how you feel. And how you feel about yourself and how you feel about life. So I'm 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 enjoying being back in gym, mate. I'm loving it. Uh can I just give me my uh, mention to Chris Barnes, uh kid who I met through Scott Brunt at Spartan Demolition. He's uh in the army, he's obviously a sergeant at Catwick and he's just rode across Pacific and as we speak now, the he's coming into Hawaii and all pressing that are there. Wow. It's called, if anybody's interested in watching it, it's called, uh, the arrival is Pacific One uh, Finish Celebration Live. And it looks like it's on the YouTube channel, World's Toughest Row. So people need to go watch that. They've done that for charity and they've been at it weeks, you know, out at sea. In like a small, I mean, it's 70 videos of sea. Whales, sharks, dolphins. Like, it's amazing, isn't it? But you need some mental strength to do that, wouldn't you, Julian? You need a lot of everything, don't you? They're just... I mean this in a nice way. I've, I've Obviously, being in boxing, you get to know ex-soldiers, ex-marines and stuff like that. The crackers, they're not... They're, I mean that in a nice way. They do an amazing thing to our, to our armed forces. But they're absolutely crackers, mate. They're... They're a different breed. We think professional fighters are a different breed. Those guys are a different breed. Yeah, he's a great nice kid as well. He's a really decent kid. Uh, and when he were told me we were doing it, I thought, it's going to be a fucker. But they've got a team of them. Of, uh, I'm not sure if it's four or five of them. Some of them. You know, they're living in close proximity to each other for you know a long time. Yeah. Uh, while they're at sea. But I'm assuming that if they want to shower, they have to... Get jump in the drink, don't they? See, I just probably. Um, I won't fancy. Um, if there's any water, I can't touch my feet on the floor, I'm not right happy about it. So, um, they'll listen, those guys know what they're doing, they'll know where, where they can swim and where they can't swim. But as I've said, a different breed, mate, different breed, amazing achievement. Yeah, it is. Uh... So, Chris, I know you're back, and uh, be nice to see you pop in at my office at Rotherham. We'll have you on the channel, and you can tell me about your experiences, and you can try and talk me into doing it, but I won't. <laughs> well done, Chris. Good one, mate. Well done, Chris. I'm proud of you, and Peter Fury sends his best. He's proud of you, mate, as well. He's a good friend of Peter's. That's well good. done. Obviously, his best mates with Scott Brunt, and uh, I must admit, it's got to have nuts to do that, haven't you? Crazy. I mean, just Crazy. as I said, we, we think professional fighters are fearless, but they wear padded gloves and they have a referee and the the fighting conditions doing something that they're absolutely skilled to do. But well, do you know, soldiers, we... yeah, go on, sorry, go on. So, soldiers can only train for so many things, but there's the the unexpected must happen all the time. You know, for a soldier, you know, you you got to be ready to ultimately die for your country, haven't you, for a cause. And how many people can truly say that they wake up? Knowing that might be a very real possibility in their life. Well, that what you've just done there. That's not uh, so it's not some of the health and safety you'd recommend doing, isn't it? Is it? Absolutely not. Try getting insurance for something like that. You want to do it? I don't think they do, would they? No one will insure you, mate. No one. I don't even think you could have insurance with Scottish widows now. Nah, if you if you go buy a bike above six hundred cc or some of I saw yeah. they online or something. They're having none of it. Listen, my dad couldn't get travel insurance because he had a bad heart every time he went abroad, so he stopped going abroad. So what chance have you got <laughs> getting life insurance when you're swimming across oceans and stuff in little capsules? None. I know. Uh, good luck to Chris and his team. Right. Uh, a lot's gone on, Julian. Anthony Joshua's come out. And he's set about Big Earn, a.k.a. Robert McCracken. 
What do we think about it? I mean, Robert McCracken went to court for him, didn't he? Got him out of prison and all that. Went through all that. Look, he's turned, how on old? Him. He's turned on him. How old, how old is he now, AJ? 34. 34, so realistically, time's running out. So what they start to do is they start to reflect and they start to blame everybody. Maybe Robert McCracken was the right coach for him. Maybe he wasn't. I don't know. But ultimately, yeah, you're an Olympic gold medalist. He turned pro. And his first four years were with Tony Sims. He was knocking people out. And then McCracken came in and Sims was going to be head coach and McCracken took over. And when you're winning, your coach is the best thing since sliced bread. And then when you start to get beat, let's blame Rob, let's blame Rob McCracken. Let's not blame the development of AJ, the lack of the hard fights he had on the way up, the, the knockover jobs that Eddie gave him on all these matchrooms. Let's not blame the matchmaking. Let's not blame AJ. Let's not blame Tony Sims who had him for the first four years. Let's not blame all these assistant coaches who he brought in himself. Didn't really consult with Rob McCracken. I'm having, what was the guy, Sanchez or whoever these guys are, I don't know who they are. Let's blame everybody. Now, time's running out on my career for my own shortcomings. Listen, AJ is a decent fighter. He's massively achieved. We know the history, blah, 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 blah. But he's been found wanting in lots of areas. And what Rob McCracken couldn't give him was a fighter's instinct against Andrew Ruiz. It was saying, what do I throw? What do I throw? And what punches he throwing at me? No idea what was going on. Now, that's not McCracken's fault for not training him against all eventualities. Some fighters don't have a great ring IQ. Some fighters don't have a great instinct. But what Rob McCracken could not give him was in that seventh round against Andrew Ruiz, when that referee gave him a count, he didn't want to carry on, mate. He wanted an ejector seat out of that ring. So well, you can't blame Rob McCracken for lacking a pair of balls, mate. Can I just say, Julian, right, you're saying he wanted out that ring. I say, oh. but why do we have sports stars going on live TV, YouTube, and in media interviews, giving him the benefit of the doubt, saying, well, did he or didn't he? He quit! He and quit! Not. So come out with it. Don't do half-hearted jobs. He quit. Say it. I'm not, call, I'm not calling him a coward, but he quit. He didn't want to carry he's on. He quit. He's a coward he gets in the ring, but he quit. Yeah. Nobody quit. can mention it because they're all afraid they're getting cut off. With press passes. Listen, the referee looked at him. It was it was the referee would give him every single chance. He was like, Look at me. Do you want to carry on? Do you want to carry on? And he just it was like, nah, I'm out. I'm done. I have got nothing left. I don't like this feeling of not knowing where I am. And basically, I'm get me out of here. And the second the referee stopped it, it was kind of like that. Look, so Rob McCracken can't give him that. Your trainer can't give you that. And this is what I've always said to you. A trainer can be an understated role, but often it's an overstated role. You've got to be able to fight. Now, you know, they say a fighter's born. Is it nature or nurture? It's all that type of thing. But ultimately, what are we, what are we going to do? Are we, are we going to blame every time he gets beat, blame the coach? And every time he wins, it's not the coach, it's the fighter who was amazing. Come on, consistency. Well, in my opinion, right, for the last few years up there, they've not even been getting proper sparring in. Because you don't argue. One, sorry. You don't argue is sorry. I know AJ, right? You vexed He's... up tonight, Julian. Aren't you? You're not normally like this. I can tell you, mate. My view on AJ is this, right? He's, he's done amazing before the fanatics jump on me, right? I like the guy. I think he's a good representation of a professional fighter. He doesn't get in, in the ring with his belly hanging over his shorts, all this kind of stuff. But he's overachieved in terms of his toolbox and his skill set. Let me just stop been... there, Julian. Right? I've been in jail with men like Joshua who've never been Jim in their life and they look like him. And they don't even go to Jim. He was probably born like that, mate. So let, well, oh, genetics, well, genetics will be, will be fabulous. I, I, long, right? I said, but you got Jim every day, don't you? He says, no, I said, you look like Frank Bruno. <laughs> I said, I got Jim, I was like this when I was 13. I was like, Ugh. trust me. We used to train with a kid called Nick Jones, and he, about 14, 15, he started boxing. And, you know, you, you, you're in the gym, and he, like, took his top off, and he's right, shredded. And he's shredded. It was shredded. It was a blonde kid. It was a good-looking kid, and he was shredded. And we're all going... Hang on a minute, we've been training years and we've got like pigeon chests and, you know, 
no, no six pack, and this kid who's just walks into a gym and he's just shredded. But look, I've no, I've no issue with it with AJ, but he's he's been matched amazingly. Okay, he, everybody knows if if no disgrace, if he fought Fury, it'd be an embarrassment. It would Tyson Fury could probably be twenty five stone and still be AJ yeah. because he's a natural. Easy, easy. So one Joshua, hundred. it'd be a one hundred job. Anthony Joshua. Tyson Fury wouldn't need to train for him. It could be him southpaw with just his front hand with his with his jab, hundred percent. Yeah. So listen, he should be thanking Rob McCracken. He should be thanking anybody involved in his career for the money he's made because there were fighters in in bygone eras who were so much more talented than AJ who who just earned peanuts. So Gary Mason would have smashed him to pieces. Was he any better than Horace? Horace Notice, Horace Notice. Gary Mason. He yeah. is the Horace Notice. He, he, he's the equivalent of Horace Notice. It's just that Horace didn't have the opportunities he had. And that's it. And that's effectively he needs it. I think he's said, look, it. he's come out here, he's had to go up front, say, look at the state of Carl Frotch's nose. He, he, McCracken didn't learn him how to defend. Carl Frotch were willing to take one to land one because he had that and that. I mean, to just to mention Carl, Carl Frotcher's nose is maybe Carl Frotcher's got a, a pair of balls that he'd happily engage in a war and he'll grit his teeth and he doesn't stay on his knee when he gets his count and look for a way out of there. Maybe that's why Carl Frotch got his nose. Old fighters get hit. Come on, I mean, even defensive He had fighters. a torrid time against George Groves Frotch, didn't he, and Jermaine Taylor, the two times he got dropped in his career. And he came through I, them both out. I'll tell you the first. I've said this to you before. I know you're a big Carl Frotch fan. Oh, I, I like him. I'm not. I'm not a fan like you are, but I like him. But I always thought when I first saw him against uh, Pascal, I couldn't believe that fight. I was just like that. He took full shots, full on, and he looked to me like he was just going to get beat. There'd be times he get hit, and I'm like, no, well, Pascal collapsed in dressing room. He were made to fight for that long. I mean, that twelve round fight. He never. It was savage. It was. A, it was a. He went at it like fight. two alley cats from the first two seconds. I was ringside. Two seconds into the fight, Frotch went flying straight over to put yeah. it on it. And they both went at it like alley cats, mate. Do you know what I want to know? I want to know why AJ has got a big fight coming up and he's talking like this, being negative and blaming. And having a good talk sport about everybody on there. You're not allowed to question me. I'm AJ. Ba -ba bang. He's looking in the mirror, isn't he? And he's really he's questioning himself. And do you know what? Even though I think he'll he'll beat Dillian White, if it gets into a real dog fight, I'd pick White over AJ in a dog fight now, right now at this stage of the career. But I just think he will he will beat White. If I'm being honest, I think White's shot, but I, t I think White's got more minerals than than AJ has any day of the week. He's willing to go out on his shield, White, isn't he? Yeah, and let's not hear about AJ got hurt in the first fight before anybody puts that in the comments. Long time ago. Let's not talk about stuff from 300 years ago. That was a long time ago. Gosh, Dylan White never won around in that fight, though, did he? They all no. keep saying it was a touch of nip and tuck and all this Eddie keeps coming out no. with barrier. The round he caught AJ and he lost two minutes, 50 seconds of the round. Yeah, absolutely. He never yeah. won a round against him. It was like so Frank Bruno. Second fight. It was like when Frank Bruno caught Mike Tyson with a bit of a left, bit of a left hook and beat went first nuts. First round or whatever. Yeah. Was, yeah. And Tyson had dropped him. He hammered him all the way through the round. And Bruno landed a couple of clubbing shots. Tyson was pivoting at the same time. It looked worse than it was. And people didn't have to go on about that for years, didn't they? It reminded me of Paul Smith when he did, had an interview after Andre Warfart, and he said he felt my power. And I, and, and I didn't see what punch that it won felt his power. He reminded me of that. <laughs> Paul Smith. Ward pro hit. Ward's probably the, well, he, he probably felt Paul Smith's power. Did he come in at like about eight pound overweight or something like that? It was crackers, yeah, wasn't it? 177 pounds or something, wasn't it? Something like that. How do you miss the weight by that much? I mean, I, that must be one of the biggest weight misses I've ever seen. Uh, well, how we missed the weight, in my opinion, well, he lost interest and I just went to, you know, he, he, he knew he would beat before he got in there, didn't he, really? He didn't even but when you he know you can... Before he got in the ring, didn't he? He went for the money. When you know you can, you're can, you going to miss the weight by that much and you know you're probably going to get fined. How much appetite, really? I mean, Paul Smith's a tough guy, tough fighter, but how much appetite have you got, really? And and Paul Smith was very lucky to get those opportunities and uh, 
you could also say it was unlucky and was it one of his fights, but it was it was pretty lucky to get those. He had a world title shot fight. after that. He had six top fights all together. He went in with De Gail Groves, Ward, yeah. and twice and Zuga, didn't he? Right. And then if you think about De Gail and Groves, they absolutely wiped him out, didn't they? Um, Paul Smith against world champions Norton Six. Well, I was somebody keeps telling me that fucking Beatles are, are boxing, aren't they? Well, one of them's not and six, so he's not a Beatle, is he? It's not great, is it? <laughs> he's not a Beatle on the main stage, is it? <laughs> you know, well, he'd, be, he'd, be Ringo Star. he'd be the Ringo Star of the Beatles, wouldn't he, mate? Pete Best. <laughs> yeah, Callum will, be, Callum will be John Lennon. Uh, Liam will be uh, Paul McCartney. McCartney. Yeah, yeah. Stephen could fight. Stephen was a good fighter. He probably the best one out. What a nice little styling. Yeah, lovely fight with Stephen Smith. Paul Smith, technically good, but weren't dedicated. His own fault. Stop making excuses, Mega Smith. Dumb. He didn't put the effort in. But when you're half a stone of a weight, and you really you were disinterested, weren't you? If you're half a stone of a weight, you're not switched on. That's how I look at it. You know, you beat before you get in it ring, aren't you? You just need to take the money. And the defense rests. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you see that? How do you see it then? We well, we're on about Joshua, aren't we? I think Joshua's is a man who's going through the motions right now. I think it's plain to see. And you know what often happens? Sometimes changing trainers is a good thing, but when they go from coach to coach to coach, they're looking for inspiration. They're looking for something new, something to keep training exciting because the heart's no longer in it. It happens to a lot of fighters. And it's like, you know what? You get paid that much money. And also, you've done it for that long. You don't kind of know what else to do. But AJ, yeah, I think he'll beat Dillian White. But you can see four or five heavyweights now just be even. I even think Zhang would beat AJ. And I never thought I would have thought that. I think Zhang would beat him. I think Joe Joyce might beat him. Not sure about Wilder. I keep changing my mind because of stylistically. Fury would beat him. Frank Sanchez, Jared Anderson would beat him, maybe, maybe not yet, but not soonish. I think, I think there are fighters who would give him fits. What about in, Huey uh, against Joshua? If Huey has a couple, I of think ones. Huey would have the would have the tools to beat him if it went his way. I, I just think it'd give Joshua something different to think about, wouldn't it? But I, I just don't think he's a man who's who's hungry anymore. I don't think he's a man who's I think he's been exposed, hasn't he? He really has been badly exposed. I mean, the the second fight with Usyk, I thought he got well beat. People kept talking about the ninth round. But the first fight, he says one-sided a fight as you'll ever see was that first fight. And and, I, and again, Usyk's a f- fabulous fighter. But like with the, with the Andy Ruiz fight, I can't get out of my head when the 12th round, when he was leaning back on the ropes and Usyk was just cracking him towards the end it was like wow it was like a flailing novice amateur in trouble it was it was not great to see so joshua two more wins max in his career and then he's off he's done right uh big john fury big fighting man he's come out he's had plenty to say tyson's had plenty to say they're saying they can't get him a fight but Frank Sanchez has been screaming for it since May 23rd, hasn't he? And he's ready to go. Uh, Mark Madoff, they had come, uh, an offer was put out to their team. They hadn't got back to him. But some of his team are now saying they, are, they weren't given an offer. They were just mentioned on social media, but no offer were put to them. But they would have took the fight. Now, that's going for the top 15. So there were people for him to fight, weren't there? But Frank Warren said... Yeah. Who'd know Sanchez or Makhmedov if they walk down the street? So I say, well, who'd know Ngannou? I don't care if you know Sanchez or not, ultimately. It's a defensive world title, isn't it? Who knew every opponent, really, that, that Larry Holmes and Ali and Joe Lewis had, you know, on a global, on global scale? I know we have social media now, and it seems to be trial by social media, but who really knew these guys, you know? Who knew Lorenzo Zanon and Scott Frank and these guys? Nobody. It's defending your title. It's as simple as that. I've got no issue, genuinely no issue, with Tyson Fury fighting Ngannou, but give up your belt. So listen, 
I want to make as much money as possible. I want to be as famous as possible. I'm so big that I can call the shots and do what I want. That's fine. No issue with that. But give up your belt because these these guys are just stopping the heavyweight division turning now. And it's not right. It's let somebody fight for that title who wants to fight for that title because clearly you don't value the heavyweight championship. And let's not have this nonsense about Ali and Antonio Inoki and this rubbish that people are coming out with and flowing me over for the the when he did that and they've been dominating years. Ali had done it. He, would, he was the best everywhere who would ever live by 1976. Even before he was, you know, his career was finished, he was the best everywhere who'd ever lived. And then you've got, like, if you look at Floyd Mayover, there was nothing left for Floyd really to do when he fought Conor McGregor. It was, it was what it was. You know, I didn't love the fight. But ultimately, Tyson's supposed to be in his prime. He's had, he's had what, three defences of his, of his title. He's like... It's a joke, and and you, I do not believe you can't get a fight. I remember, was it, was it Tommy Morrison who the day of the fight was supposed to fight? It was Tommy Morrison, and someone pulled out, and they actually got a guy out of the crowd to fight. Now this isn't uncommon. People are desperate to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. Did it People with, are uh, desperate, Cooper, didn't they? In Oldfield, didn't they? they put yeah. him in, didn't they? Exactly. Look, this is when 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 the he was ran before, number they, nine or something. They dug him out. Crowd. He got stuck into Oldfield, didn't he? Just people will fight the heavyweight championship of the world. This is rubbish, right? Maybe one or two people wanted options. I mean, like an AJ or a, you know, maybe Andy Ruiz thought, you know what, I could probably get more money for fighting Wilder. That Those guys were multi, multi-millionaires. I get why they might think maybe not yet. But if you're a hungry contender and you, you think you're going to be frozen out for three or four years, Frank Warren says to you, do you want to fight Tyson Fury? Absolutely. There's not a chance... They could not get a half decent opponent. It doesn't have to be a top five. There's not a chance they can't get a half decent opponent. Not a chance. Yeah. What do you think of Tyson coming out on social media and bragging about not being stripped and bragging about what he's getting and what Usyk's getting and that? Do you think that's in bad taste? I think it's what it, it's that thing, isn't it? You know, Tyson Fury in the ring is such a capable fighter. He's, he's we can go on all day. People think we, we're down on Fury. We're, we're not. In the ring, he's got heart, he's got courage, he's got skills to burn. And to come back from being 10 stone overweight or whatever it was and that, whatever he came through to be where he is, unbelievable, right? That's done. That's Can't talk about that forever. He weren't 10 stone, but he, he, what, next, yeah. this time next year, it'll be about 15 stone, won't it? It keeps... It's had, has, stuff keeps adding to his weight. Well, Nowhere near 10 stone. People no. need to get that 10 stone mark out of the minds. Nowhere near 10 stone at all. Nowhere near. It was well, didn't look nine. It, it was yeah. a couple of pounds under nine. He, I heard Frank Warren say 11. It goes up all the time, doesn't it? On a life of his own. They want to know about people who lost more than 11. I lost 19 stone nine. All right, so don't be trying to get near my 19 stone nine, Tyson. It was six foot six and a half when he turned pro, wasn't it? Six foot nine now. It'll be seven it feet was, three next week. You know what? You've, what you've just said there is correct. He was six foot six and a half, <laughs> age 20 on his debut, right? That's true. Yeah. But I also know he, he's, he's been measured at six foot seven, but the six nine. He's grown a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he hasn't grown two and a half. Years. I've seen photos of him with other guys who are six foot six, and there's not a lot between. I'd say six seven. I would say six, same seven. as Jerry Cooney, he's about six oh, foot I've seven. Heard yeah. back he's six seven, he ain't six nine, but they do that for to get in your head, don't they? Do you know what I mean? To get it fight. Oh, Vladimir turned up with his high heels on, didn't he? Because he bought into it. Is he six nine? Look, he's six seven. Get over it, all these freaks who think he's six nine. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Out of his asshole. He's six <laughs> foot seven. See that on paperwork. <laughs> born liars. We said this before, and we got attacked for saying he was six foot seven. <laughs> just, David it's, Price is an inch taller than him. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? It's just like, look, it, yeah, it's. Know. These History two are freak. The freaks, aren't they, though? Yeah. Well, oh, look at the what... box, mate. The freaks. The guys had three defences. They're talking about him as a goat. Ali had about 26 world title fights. Didn't he lose in five? Or it was a match. 
But, he had like uh, he lost four title fights because Burbit. Or did well, one win autumn one at a time? Burbit was a ten yeah, round. He lost five altogether, Ali, didn't he? It was there were some of those obviously the Holmes and Burbit fights you can scratch those and the Spink the Spinks and Norton oh, and oh, and Fraser he avenged them. So Spaz hang on a minute. Fraser, that were for a belt, one at the first one. He lost that. He lost to Norton. Oh. See? That one yep. for a belt. The world, the Norton lost. Well, it the Norton them. fight, I think, was for the NABF Championship. Yeah. Well, the other two were world title ones, weren't they? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Were they? I might be wrong on that. Um, no, sorry. I think the first two were NABF, and I think yeah, the, the, the third, third one was fifteen. Yeah. So three of them. For, well, they only lost two world title. No, one world title fight against Fraser and then Holmes. So Ali lost two world title fights, didn't he? Rematch Fraser, he couldn't Holmes because they dug him up to fight him, couldn't he? Yeah, and it was awful. Went on to yeah. fight Burbick for a million, didn't he? So, but, you know what I mean? Can't eat that yeah. one for a belt, it? but he couldn't rematch him, could he? But up until him digging Ali up, the losses he's had, he rematched him, and he rematched Norton and Fraser twice, didn't he? Just to get one up on him, didn't he? So the guy this is, is King Kong. This is Ali. This is you can't even compare, can you? you well, they're comparing can't. it. These freaks of nature. You can't. And I saw an interview the other day. Yes, you, Gareth A. Davies, should give him. Yeah, you're in helmets, mate. Get ready. But Gareth A. Davies, let me just say this: you had an opportunity twice in the last couple of weeks when they were going on about trilogies. The liars. I call them liars now. John Fury, aka Tarzan, the liar. Liars. Tarzan. Liars. We're lying, right? Going on about lineage. There's no lineage back to John L. Sullivan, is the Julian? In, in fact, it's on. Is it to vitally or one at Clinton? It's impossible to trace back now. It's gone. It's That's impossible. Gone. But here they've got it in their heads that they go back to John L. Sullivan to eight whatever hundred on you go. Bullshit. Utter bullshit. Go and read the record book. That's the first thing you shit your pants on, Gad. What was the second thing now? The trilogies, he never mentioned about Ken Norton and Ali three times and Fraser and Ali. But making out that they're the only ones that done trilogies. Chisora, two of Chisora fights weren't even for a world title, were it? Out of the trilogy. Evan, Evander Holyfield for Riddick Bowe three Riddick times Bowe. and John, John yeah. Ruiz three times. Yeah. yeah. You see what I mean? They make it, they make it up. They're in. They're what? What's what do you call it, Julian? Not stolen by history revisionist. The history revisionist. History man. Do you know why? If you repeat it enough, people believe it. Yeah, and, and also people, no disrespect, a lot of people I haven't got great boxing knowledge before of Mike Tyson, and they just couldn't tell you this stuff. It's like... Yeah. To be fair to uh, Tyson Fury, when the gad started licking his arsehole, he says, yeah, and I think Derek Chisora is such a better fighter now, better now than he were the other two. Tyson went, shut up. Yes, he did. Yeah. Because even he knew, hey... Even that, he knew they couldn't get away with that one, didn't he? Well, that yeah. just shows you when you've got a top journalist, Gareth A. Davis is supposed to be a top journal. Daily Telegraph, is it? And, and Talk Sport and whatever, all access. And he's coming out with stuff like that. That proves that they're writing their own narratives. In fact, yeah, Jimmy Chisora is a better fighter in third one. No. In fact, no. I've got an issue with Gareth A. Davis because Gareth A. Davis, some other knackers who were chatting oh, yeah, about the other well. week. I'll tell you what, what, the other week he was on about he was defending he was defending the Ngannou fight, and he oh, said, God. "You see, Larry Holmes. You know, people were frustrated with Larry Holmes that he couldn't get the big fights that mattered, and and he actually reinvented Larry Holmes's career. Larry Holmes, there were no massive clamour for unifications because the WBA belt kept changing hands. Nobody had any consistency." He was going to fight Jerry Cutts here in 84, who had locked in really against Mike Ducks and ended up getting knocked out by Greg Page. And he said Larry Holmes was really people frustrated with Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes defended his belt 20 times against yeah. the best there was. And he's trying to compare a situation with a guy who had 20 defences, with a guy who's had three defences and saying, and all he's hoping is that people don't remember from 1978 to 1985. Well, I do, Gareth A. Davis. So if you don't know about Larry Holmes's career and why he didn't have oh, unifications, didn't are you lying? Are you making it up? They said, well, that's what they do. He's like Gareth A. Davis, you, Elmer at Month, you. You, Gareth A. Davis, remind me of some PR guy that's employed by them. You're yeah, supposed to be neutral. This is why boxing's on its arse as it is. 
because the media are allowing people to get away with this crap. Because everybody's in everybody's pocket. They've all got in-house YouTubers. Umar there with Bricktop. Coogan with Eddie Hearn. Flexing with Bricktop. Everybody, uh, Boxing King Media. With, Parsons. Parsons. Uh, oh. Ingle and Parsons with Eddie Hearn. He's being groomed, isn't he, by match groom? Q jumper Eddie Hearn and Parsons thinks oh. it's a fantastic story. <laughs> oh, what happened with that one? Tell me about that one, Joe. Hang on, let me, hang on, let me just finish on this, right? So Tyson Fury, right, and his big jab, big jab, big John Fury, big fighting man. Him who reckons they're my five are watching me from the moon. Yeah, they are. They're watching you from the moon, right? There's Andy Ruiz, Joe Joyce, AJ Usek, Zhang, Ergovic, Sanchez, Jabbar, Bacoli, Martin Bacoli. Uh, Mac Madoff, there's 12, 11, 12 fighters there. All of them, if you go through social media, would fight Tyson Fury, right? But they're so difficult to deal with. Every time any negotiations have come up, they, they've just all been put aside. But look what Bricktop's done. He's got Debar, Daniel Debar in position, and Joe Joyce, they're all in position, aren't they? They're getting these guys in the mix, in, in, you know, for mandatory slots. Yeah, he's good at that, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? Debar in and you know he's strategic. I mean? He's very, very strategic. Frank could have just said, "Debar, you're not taking this fight, Tyson. Fight him, Usyk." Oh, but no, the promoters are going to come out and back their guy. But it's just bullshit. Frank Warren has told that many whoppers this week. He's trying to tell us how to suck eggs. You may be able to convince these travellers that follow Tyson Fury who are diehards. You're not convinced me. You're not convinced me, Bricktop, what you're doing. What you're doing is the same as you did with Joe Calzaghi's career. Joe Calzaghi had 22 world title fights, right? Only two of them had belts, Lacey and Kessler. Who were the mm -hmm. other 20? Washed up guys or guys who had no belts. Who were the other 20? Talker what? Pudwell. Talker Pudwell. Peter Manfredo and my reality <laughs> star. Frank Warren... Put Peter Manfredo on and Joe Calzaghi in a big arena, didn't he? Do you remember? Massive arena. Yeah. Was, it in, was it in Cardiff? He was in the contender, wasn't he? Yeah, that program. Yeah, well, so yeah. what? So what? He's been in contender. He's got, he's got a good. bit of a following. He was a light middleweight, you know, to start with. You know yeah. that? Yeah, he was. Light he was, yeah. So he's fighting a guy who finished his career at light heavyweight. When he got in ring with him, oh, my God. What was it? Lasted about four minutes, didn't it? The actual fight, second round, wasn't it? Embarrassing for Frank Warren, but they pushed that fight for months, didn't they? Yeah. And what we've got now, we've got issue repeating itself again. Tyson Fury's with Bricktop. Who was he really for? He saw they saw what he did with Wild at first time, right? And he must have thought, well, I've two more with them. We'll keep him with him till he gets right. Otto Wall and all that, all, all them others, them. Uh, uh, Otto Wall and Swartz or whatever he's called. Yeah, the the South. Uh, Chisora and White, and now we've got this other guy. He's further away now. They're fighting Usek than ever before. They're further away, Julian. Look, is he any near to fighting Andy Ruiz? No, they're not going to go near. Andy Ruiz can fight, mate, can't he? That yeah, is, good fight. Listen, that's a 60-40 fight for Tyson in Tyson's favour, yeah? Yeah. Lose that fight, but it's 60-40, so they don't even want to risk something like that. Joe Joyce. I reckon he beats Joe Joyce. I've seen him spar Joe when he was 27. He beat Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce couldn't get near him. Tyson didn't even have to move. Flogged him, mate. Couldn't get near him. AJ, I don't know if that fight's going to happen. There's that much bad blood between them. Does Eddie even want to put him near Fury? I don't think so when they can keep no, him. No. Him. So that fight, I don't think ever happened. He's been talking about it for 13 years since he sparred. That, that's gone. Oh, sec, they don't want to go near him. He's got an answer for everything. You, you're not 100% on night. Nah, you lose against him, he outboxes you. Who we're left with now? Zhang, he's 40, coming up 41. He's an old man. They might want to fight Zhang soon, eh? Ergovic, two wet behind ears. Frank Sanchez, that's a tough fight for Tyson. Frank. Hard fight, that's a hard fight. You don't want that one. Daniel Dubar, no, he's quit. he's got quitting in him. He's another Victor Ortiz. Uh, all that uh, big punching guy, Maidana. Not Maidana. Maidana made him quit, didn't he? Who's the other guy that quit? I forget. There's a guy who quit. No, Martin McCauley, he's not a quitter. That's an hard fight for Tyson Fury. Martin McCauley, that's a proper hard fight. If the right McCauley turns up, 
Do you know what I mean? That's these the, these are all these are all fights that are. But then you've got Magmadov, the Russian boxing. big puncher. Uh, uh, do you know what I mean? He could fight all them, couldn't he? But we're not going to get it's, that, are we? It's just the whole thing, isn't it? You know what they're doing, and everybody knows what they're doing. This and Garnum fight. That doesn't matter if a lot of you listen to boxing people online and people talk about it. No one's really excited about it, but he knows he's going to get a massive amount of UFC fighters, the the voyeurs, the curiosity, who are going to tune in to come over just for one night only to come over and watch this fight and see if Ungano can can land his the hardest punch ever recorded. This rubbish, this nonsense that they're making up. To see if he can, you know, he breaks computers and he breaks punch bags and if he can land on Tyson, what's going to happen? And they're just selling it. And it's just utter nonsense. And Tyson will just do whatever he wants to do against Nganu. There might be a few swings and a few around the side of the head where there's oohs and ahs. And then they'll have a narrative that, oh, he, he hurt Tyson at one point in Nganu. And they'll, they'll try and defend this fight. And we all know we're watching a one-sided thrashing. Listen, let me just tell you something now, right? Do you know who Eddie Hall is? That yes, big, the uh, strongman. Yeah. 26 stone and all that. I mean, a big old lump, in it. He came to Peter Fury's gym to fight Huey Fury. This is a true story. People can go and ask Peter Fury on Twitter what happened. And everybody were like, you know, he's a tint bag. He is a powerful bloke. <laughs> really powerful. He, he'd probably have an hard, uh, as hard a punch as this Engano. He oh, a massive puncher. Listen, ceiling was shaking, mate. Mm -hmm. Got in, right? I got in, right? This is true. With Yui, who was as tall as him and probably about eight, seven, eight stone lighter. Yui only hit him a couple of times with jabs, right? Yeah. Jumped through ropes, mate. He jumped through the ropes. Strongest man in the world. If Different people don't world. believe me that, go and text Peter Fury on Twitter and said, As you did, Yui spar Eddie Hall. At Bolton, Halliwell Road, Bolton, 2018 or something, something like that. 19. People are going to turn around. They're going to say this guy's a combat fighter. He's a, he's a mixed martial artist. He's got great hands. He's knocked people out of his hands. It's a different world. You can't explain the difference between... It's boxing, boxing rules. rules. He's not going to be able to kick yeah. him off, put him in an headlock. Tyson will have him locked down in a contract that says if he does anything... With his elbows, legs, or whatever, because they'll be paranoid to death in case the kid's head goes. Because if it gets out of him, he can do him in 20 seconds, can't it? Easy. Yeah, easy. So, yeah. Tyson won't want to take liberties too much with him. Right? But he'll have him locked down like me with McGregor. If McGregor yeah. touched him or whatever, it were 30% of this money. And the guy will end up with notes. So I can assure you, he's just there to get peppered and they'll have a nugget end. And then everybody will go, Well, that it. Well, that it. We've been robbed. <laughs> And, and then, then that's it, they're over hills and far away with money. And then the morning after, the morning after, Frank's going to say something like, right, Usyk's next, Joshua's next. Everybody's going to believe it and everybody's going to get giddy and wet the knickers and they're going to fall for this rubbish again because they're stupid. 20-odd years since we had a heavyweight championship unification it's, it's, and people, oh, people are stupid, you know. They're, they're actually stupid. And who can blame Earn and Warren and everybody else for keeping this this social media, this narrative going because people get giddy about it. They're like, oh, do you know, have you heard who Tyson Fury's fighting next? AJ and Fury, finally. And then they put the it's post. 19, How many times? 99, Julian, the last... The last 19, How many 99. times has someone put online Fury versus Joshua? So we have had one this century then, have we? No. This century. They can't even no. give us it. Warren, Hearn, Aram. Embarrassment. You're embarrassment. Whoever you at bot, uh, no, it's just Warren and Ern. No, it's all sex lot and Warren, isn't it? Because Ern's not even yeah. a mixed button dispute, is it? Brick top and all sex lot. Six belts mm -hmm. between yous, and you can't get it ring. Because what you want to do, you want to rip boxing fans off, right? And keep them at, keep their boxers earning. Keep ripping us off and keep dangling carrot. Well, we've had enough now. Six belts, yeah. you can't bring them to, together. Because you all want to make money and abuse us, you. Him. And we've got the lightweights and the welterweights keeping the sport alive. That's what we've got. We've got Derek Chisora running around with 13 losses and they're digging him up yet again. You couldn't make it up. Could you want to turn on to uh, part two, yep. Julian? Yep. One minute, mate. I'll log on. All right. Cheers.